and for tonight. So I thought I would, um, I'd start with that first poem um, that AQR published. And I thought I'd mostly read poems that have been published in AQR over the years. Um, and one and one exception, one newer poem as an exception. But um, this is that first, that first poem, which ended up being part of my first book, um, Interpretive Work. And it's titled The Oarfish, which is an amazing creature, kind of detailed a little bit in the poem. The Oarfish. It took three people to carry its length, sagging between their hands from the rack line where they found it down to the water's edge. From a distance, just a pale smear along the beach, probably garbage, probably a ride of sand, driftwood, but something in its snaked lie made them walk up and look and then lift it. I wasn't there, but have stared so often at the snapshot, I'm convinced I could have been. And that's good enough, isn't it? To look at a picture and feel the sun on your shoulders, the dead weight of the fish, the shifting rocks underfoot, hot through the thin soles of canvas shoes, the smell of insect repellent and decay. This strange long weight that they picked up, serpent, discovery, trophy, documentation, a thing no one else they'll ever know will have seen. Yes, they'll nod to the guidebooks. It's like that, but not quite. The red was more subtle, the belly not so sleek. We held it. Scales glimmered on our skin after. I wish I had been there. It's curled and ghostly on the wall. They picked it up and smiled. They sighted down the long fin of its dorsal, the two plumes trailing from its head, flaring like oars, rested on the inside of their upturned arms. Um, so this next poem is another poem from that same book that also first appeared in Alaska Quarterly Review. And with the upcoming <clears throat> election, I thought I would bring this kind of back into the world, a poem written on the eve of another election from a moment in which the self and the political sphere around the self kind of come into collision, not kind of, do. So this was written in November, 2004, um, but it's titled Site-Specific Adaptations. This winter, I became a man. It happened the first week of November while my girlfriend guided photo tours of polar bears. For a week in Manitoba, she wakes, eats, and rides the tundra buggies with tourists over eskers, lending story to what they see. This year, though, another landscape competes with what's running the boreal tree line. She and I are on the ballot. Our home, our tax burden and hospital visitation rights in 11 states. She's wary, bans talk of the election, but still. To some of them, she looks suspect, short-haired, short-nailed, with a walk that's wide and expects to be made way for. Out on the tundra, she tries to keep them focused. Look at the fox digging for its cache of meat. But no bears in sight. A bored wife turns from the view saying, so have you left anyone at home? My lover says, a jeer falcon. Until the last few years, we knew almost nothing of their nesting habitats. It's November 2nd, four more days with this group seven with the next, then she'll come home to me. What weather they're having, mid-twenties and clear, bears at the bay's edge in golden light, testing the new ice, hungry for seal. Four more days in the buggy, four more dinners of careful talk. My husband is a poet, she finally says, for the first time not risking this truth and hating that what she loves could bring her to this lie. Um, um, there's a couple other poems I want to read um, that are not yet collected. 
Um, but hopefully we'll be in the future, maybe actually just one of them. Um, I've been working on these series of poems about Admiral Donald B. McMillan, who was a, an Arctic explorer born and raised in Provincetown uh, next door to where I live now on Cape Cod um, and spent his life going up to the Arctic, taking folks up north. And I suppose in some ways, in many ways, this is a pandemic related poem. Uh, because he was up there during the time of the Spanish influenza. And as letters came north, uh, they would open, the folks there would open the letters and guess what came out? Germs, in addition to news, et cetera. Um, so I was thinking a lot about that transmission over many, many miles. And I wrote a more narrative poem, but this is a more associative poem kind of engaging with the same question that first was published in AQR. Um, it's titled, Regarding the Absent Heat of Your Skin on Letters I Receive While at Sea. Paper wing, words smudged in your hand's stroke, what has been sealed, torn mouth, lung must, and a shiver along my lateral line, all factory lobe lit up, breath on the paper, wind on the water and off it, breath from the water, an ill wind, tear salt, fish near the surface glinting, plankton rising, forced, scent of panic, lung must, petrels arrive because of, patter and feed, your eyes on the horizon are greedy, could eat leagues, call my name, breeze, wind, gale, let the air clock around your mouth, it pushes unturned against your mouth. If you stand on the shore and call, I'll know. Um, I have two other poems I wanna read before we get to hear uh, Robert Wrigley's amazing work. Um, this next one is titled The Truro Bear, uh, which is after a poem of the same title by Mary Oliver. Um, but she wrote her poem before we actually had a bear on Cape Cod um, or in the in-between time when there hadn't been bears for a long time. And this first appeared again in AQR. And I had been missing Alaska so much when I moved back to Cape Cod after living there. The Truro Bear. I am lonely for the bear, two towns south and heading here. The bear too is lonely. For what other reason would it swim the canal than walk the whole of the Cape toward us? Mornings, we rise early, drive, look in places we'd like to see it. Evenings, the same. Scat, a track, a tuft of hair would be enough. We don't mind ticks or briars, although we're troubled when highway drivers spot it and not us. One man catches it on infrared in his backyard light bulb of a hind end, narrow legs sauntering. Orleans, Wellfleet, Depot Road, then at Bradford and Conwell, the busiest corner in town. This will be the summer I don't return to Alaska. This will be the summer I won't visit the woods where I learn to walk with bears. One afternoon in the height of it, steaming home from a day on the water, no bear at race point, no bear at high head. We pick up a distress call from a boat off Wood End Point. The black bear has lost power, is being set ashore. We turn west, stare. The black bear, I'm not kidding. Rust stains every plank of its dark hull. We watch the crew dig out an anchor, drop it. We stand by until they feel it catch. Bob says they made the same call yesterday. The next day, or the one after, officials dispatch teams with darts and nets, and the bear is gone. Things are fine for a while, although our market chit-chat feels small and mean. Then we hear it's headed our way. We hear it's climbed a Boston suburbs tree where they shot it and trucked it west again to the woods they think it came from. But it was coming back. It had found plenty here. Berries, acorns, skate tails on the beach, ground unclaimed. I was lonely at that age. I wandered, restless. Now I will be 
The woods will be, the ponds and bogs and briars will be so lonely for the bear. We know how alive we were at its low shrug. For a while, at least, we were re-enchanted, our gossip urgent and hopeful. We loved our loneliness then. <laughs>